Hello and welcome again. This is Charles Kelly, Money Tips, bringing you money tips to help you save, earn, invest, accumulate and enjoy more money. Uh, I, I was in financial services for around 25 years. I worked for banks, uh, insurance companies. Uh, I had my own brokerage at one time. And yeah, I, I'm not registered anymore to give financial advice. Excuse my voice, by the way. I've got this winter, a bit of flu, I think. Uh, I'm not registered anymore to give financial advice, but I can comment on things. I can give you stories. I can give you uh, news, but I can't give you recommendations, as you know. I'm also the author of the book, Yes, Money Can Buy You Happiness, where I go through various tips on handling money, managing money, uh, being happy with money and making money. So today I want to talk to you about uh, HSBC and Santander customers who are set to get a refund for overdraft penalty charges and uh, HSBC, obviously the World Wide Bank, said it would refund 8 million to 115,000 customers. Santander said it would comply with the rule, which was laid down by the Competition and Market Authority following, uh, because the banks didn't send out a message to tell people that they were going overdrawn and then charge them to go into an unar unar unarranged overdraft and, and then because of those charges, because of it, oh, they didn't warn me that I was going overdrawn. Now they're, they're going to get that money back. So yeah, they're going, to wait, they're going to refund all this money. But I suppose at the end of the day, it will cost everybody money because, you know, the bank, that's money that could be otherwise invested into branches and staff. You know, because when after the financial crisis, you notice that a lot of the banks have cut back. I mean, I used to go to my local HSBC and we could open a business account or a new business account. Um, we had students at that time, we could get, get, get them in there, they had staff there to deal with you know, people. Now you go there, there's only one or two people, they say, no, you have to go online, or they point you to a phone on the wall and say, you've got to ring head office, and then you're ringing an overseas call centre in the Philippines. You know, There's no staff there anymore. So the more money that's paid out on things like these PPI and, and, and these refunds, and, and also the, the, the financial services, uh, the, the financial sector crash, then it all affects investment in, at the end of the day. And <clears throat> so that's the story there. Um, it does remind me of when I worked in financial services, when I worked for NatWest Bank, that they had a whole team of people. And I used to sit at one point kind of behind the counter to, to the side of the, uh, where the, I could see the customers at, in, in the counter. And there was a team that sat around this table, the team of four, I think. And all they did was was deal with customers who went overdrawn and they would ring them up and say you know you're overdrawn again and it was the same old people and so we have to charge you 30 pounds to go overdrawn or 25 pounds or whatever it was because they'd gone overdrawn without authority in other words an authorized overdraft is where you've said i've got an overdraft facility of a thousand pounds and you go into that overdraft and then the bank will meet your payments your direct debits checks and other things um and that that up to that thousand pounds but if you go beyond that or you haven't got any uh any authority to go overdrawn uh, then the bank will either stop the payment they'll bounce the the direct debit uh, withhold it or they'll bounce other payments and stand in orders and or they'll they'll pay them and then charge you either way it doesn't look good on your bank statement because you're on your bank statement you say unauthorized overdraft charge in this case, it was £69. And you can tell how long ago I worked for the bank. So £69 unauthorised overdraft charge. And of course, that is then added to your overdraft. So it makes it worse. So you might have been, say, at zero. And then you've got a standing order going out for £100. So you're now minus 100 And then the bank said, well, hold on. You didn't have authority for this overdraft. We didn't, you know, you're not allowed to go overdrawn. You're borrowing without authority. So we're going to add charge you 69 pounds and now you're 169 pounds overdrawn and these charges can accumulate and uh, actually send people hundreds of pounds overdrawn just just for being maybe 30 pounds overdrawn without authority so it can be quite serious but the team dealt with the same people all the time and quite frankly the, the accounts and the customers were just a pain in the ass the bank would have rather just got rid of them because they were they were taking up staff time dealing with you know, the same people that just, I was going to say something else, but the same people who just went overdrawn and couldn't handle their money. Now, nowadays, you've got online banking, you've got apps on your phone, you can look on your phone and see where you're going uh, at any, at a stroke, really. 
Now, the critical time obviously is obviously at the end of the month when perhaps your bills are going out, start of the month with a lot of direct debits going out. So that's the time you've got to look to see what money is there. If the money is not there, then talk to your bank and say, well, can I have an overdraft? Can I have a loan? Uh, or, you know, maybe you've got to stop some of these direct debits and stand in orders for things that you might not be using anymore, like the gym membership that you, that you never go to or, um, you know, stuff that you're paying out for memberships of different sites, memberships of clubs and all, all these sort of things that you might be involved in that you're just not using. Or can you save money by phoning up your, your electricity and gas company and saying, look, I need a cheaper deal. Can you put me on a different tariff or can I move tariffs? There's, there's all sorts of ways of saving money, but you've got to manage money. This is why I'm talking here about <clears throat> the three R's of money management. Actually looking after your money and knowing where your money is going before your bank tell you, by the way, do you know you're overdrawn? I know it's easy to uh, overlook things, um, you know, sometimes. And, uh, you know, we all get into trouble. This is how to manage and grow your money <clears throat> in in the book there. I know it's easy to, you know, sometimes forget and occasionally. But I, what, what I saw was that these people were like serial, unauthorised overdraft people. They were just always overdraft, always overdrawn and always getting into trouble without authority. Now, if they come in and talk to the bank and say, look, I need an overdraft facility. Excuse me a second. <clears throat> I need an overdraft facility. Can you help me? Maybe they could have got somewhere. But now that they're in, in, in on their bad books, like they've gone overdrawn, they've been charged, it doesn't look good. And the bank is saying, well, you know, we can't really help these people. Also, if you go for a mortgage <clears throat> or you go for any type of loan or sometimes even to rent a property, they might say, well, can we see your bank statements? And if they look on your bank statement, you say, well, that payment was bounced, unauthorised overdraft fee, unauthorised overdraft fee. That's not going to look good on your record. And, and it's going to show on your credit history as well. If you miss payments, missed payments on your credit file. So you've got to manage your money. Otherwise, you're going to have a poor credit history, uh, poor record with your bank. And then the problem then escalates. The more you, you go into the, the, these situations, the less you're able you are to, to borrow money and get cheap credit where you need it. So it's like the biblical uh, saying, you know, to him who has more will be given to him who has not. Even that which he has will be taken away from them. And that could have been referring to people who get into trouble with 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 credit, with overdrafts and, and that sort of thing. So, I mean, you could blame the banks, of course, but then the banks are giving you an account. They, they don't expect you to sort of take money from them without authority. They can take money from you, <laughs> but they don't want you taking their money. That's just a little uh, bit of flippancy there. But uh the, the the secret is to manage your money properly and you know and, and often these people the reason they were going overdraft overdrawn was because they were just spending money um willy-nilly they were just going out and buying this and buying that and let's have a few more lunches let's have a few more coffees charge it to the bank and then oh well, i'm overdrawn what, what what happened where did the money go where did that time go what happened i don't know where it all goes you know and these are the people who never uh, have any money because they can't manage even that little bit that they've got which goes back to the the talents uh, the, the parable of the talents in the bible I'm waffling on a bit here but there you go manage your money now things like uh, Black Friday last week that's the time when people go crazy and spend money perhaps that they haven't got Black Friday then turned into Black Friday weekend so it goes on till Monday then it's Cyber Monday. Now it's Cyber Bloody Week. The whole it's going on the whole week now. I'm getting emails every five minutes. First it was Black Friday, then Black Friday weekend. Now Cyber Monday. Now Cyber Week. It's now Wednesday. I'm still getting stuff offering to to try and take my money from me. Uh, but I'm I'm resisting. I'm resisting spending that money because I, I I will buy things that I need, not just because it's on Cyber Week or Black Friday Friday sale. There'll always be another deal. I would rather spend my time looking for assets, shopping for assets or, or looking for property that I can buy with no money down. That's the best way to, to go shopping. Go shopping for assets. Go shopping for property using other people's money. If you want to know how to do that, let me know. I'll put you on a, a free course, a free taste a day that will blow your mind and will perhaps get you into to, to shopping for property rather than shopping for crap and shopping for stuff on Black Friday that you probably won't need after a couple of months and it will put you into the red with your bank and give you, put you into a spiral of debt problems, okay? So don't do that. Do, 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 do this free course that I can put you on very quickly and you can really learn from experts how to, to make money in property. And don't, 
I've seen people do it. You know, I've seen people come from nothing to building a very nice income to be able to get out of the rat race, quit their job. And then some of them have gone on further and built substantial portfolios. All right, it's not going to happen overnight, of course. It's not a get rich quick scheme. It's a get rich, steady, get rich, do things for yourself, get out there, do a bit of work, uh, do it in your spare time first, build up some residual income so that you can quit your job and get out of that rat race and then build a fortune slowly but surely. That's what it's all about. And that, that's why you need to learn how to do it and how to use other people's money, which has been done for centuries using other people's money uh, to, 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 to become wealthy. OK, so that's enough about the banks. Um, just to, I might go into this again tomorrow, but the UK's biggest commercial property fund, uh, M&G, has suspended withdrawals because they said people were withdrawing money uh, from the fund. I might go into that story in a little bit more detail uh, on another day. Um, but I, I prefer to invest directly in property myself rather than using fund managers. If I want to buy a share, I prefer to buy that to research myself and buy shares myself rather than using fund managers who take out big charges. And then when people want their money back, they say, oh, we have to suspend it. The reason they're suspending it is because um, if people take their money out of the fund, they, they would then may, maybe have to sell property to pay that money back. And, and that's not the idea of a property fund. It's a long term investment. But uh, they don't want to maybe sell properties when they, they might not get the best price for those properties. So, so, th so there you go. Other news is that Sky uh, are, in, are expanding their, their studios and, and building new studios in the Elstree area. And they're going to spend, I think, three billion on, on these studios, uh, which is great news for the UK. It's great news for... Uh, investment in the UK, which people keep saying wouldn't happen after Brexit, but it's, but it's happening. And it's great news for the Elstree area. Elstree has had studios, uh, film studios, since 1925. And although a lot of the, the big Hollywood studios are not, are not there anymore, they've still got studios where they film EastEnders, Holby City. They've still got very successful Elstree studios where they film shows like uh, The Crown, Big Brother, which has stopped now, um, uh, other other shows, a lot of quiz shows. And it was the place where they filmed the original Star Wars and George Lucas has still got studios there. And many other films, I think in the Indiana Jones, the original Indiana Jones, The King's Speech. A lot of it now is, is for small TV works, film work. Uh, and, and the Crown series, of course, is a hugely successful series on Netflix. It's, about the, it's following the Queen from childhood to present day and they're on their third series now but that's a really big production so it's great news for l street will bring in uh, up to 2000 jobs uh, so 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 that's good news and it shows that companies like sky and other companies have faith in in the uk industry the uk film industry now accounts for i think close to 20 percent of overall worldwide revenue in filmmaking it's become a good place because i think the uh, the, the government made it cheap for for companies to invest in film that there's some tax breaks for them to, to to film here and it's cheaper to film here than it is in Hollywood and they've got great uh, technicians great uh, post-production teams based in in the UK in Pinewood and, and in Elstree Leaves and Studios the Warner Brothers Studios in Watford also in Hertfordshire but that's great news from Sky and it will mean that there'll be a it's almost like a new era of film success in the Elstree uh, Studios area and the Elstree Studios complex. So great news there. So so that's all for now. Uh, so if you want to get into property, let me know. Drop me a line on Messenger or at charles at charleskelly.net. Thanks for listening and bye for now. Have a great day.